Right, now we're going to talk about the brush tool. And the brush tool is great because it's, um, it's, uh, it's very versatile and uh, you can pretty much do anything, any drawing tasks with it because it has all these uh, tool properties that you can adjust and play around with. Uh, for example, just, um, just the very first thing uh, I'll, I'll mention is the, if, you've got, if you're using a, a Wacom tablet and you would be if you were, if you were animating directly into this, I mean, if you're using a mouse, then you won't have sensitivity. Um, but hey, why would you use a mouse for, to draw? A, eh? you need to get a Wacom tablet. Um, anyway, with the sensitivity, um, you can adjust the the minimum and the maximum spread on with these two fields here in the tool properties. If you can't see the tool properties, you can drop them down from any from any panel with uh, the little arrow on the list, and you just choose tool properties. Um, this is a context sensitive panel, so if I choose the um, pencil tool, I'll get pencil properties. If I choose the selection tool, I'll get selection tool properties. And that's something worth looking at for every tool as you start to explore them as well. Um, so going back to the brush, um, the reason I wanted to mention that is uh, if you're using brush sensitivity, you get the inconsistent line, which is nice for certain effects, but sometimes you want a, a consistent line. Um, especially if, you, you, if your visual style is to give the character um, a consistent uh, width uh, line around the outside. So in that case, instead of having a low minimum pressure and a high maximum pressure, pressure I'd put them both at the same. So let's say we put 8 in both fields, and there we've got uh, an, a very consistent line. Um, so... The, the next thing I want to talk about with the brush tool is the fact that it's um, you can resize just by holding down the O key you can resize the brush you just hold down the O key and drag your mouse uh, drag your pen and you've got um, a resizable thing on the fly which is very handy you can um, quickly zoom down to a really small fine line and do some fine work and then you can zoom up and do some big fat brush strokes broad brush strokes. Um, let's quickly talk about the paint modes. Uh, first of all you've got just a normal painting mode which is this one here, normal brush, um, but you have uh, something called paint behind and uh, repaint brush. You've got a couple of other more advanced ones but I'll, we can maybe cover this one in particular, the, the color art line art. We, we'll cover that one in a different, you know, much later. Um, but the others I'll just quickly touch on. First of all, we've um, uh, painting normally, we can just do colors like this and then paint colors over the top and then paint other colors over the top and so forth. But um, if we use the draw behind button and uh, we have something already painted, say this for example, and I wanted to draw something behind him, I would click this uh, button, make sure that's on and it just draws behind that, which is very handy at certain times, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the next one we'll look at is um, repaint. Now this this basically repaints any existing paint. It won't re it won't paint anything that where there's no paint because it's repainting. So first of all, I'll turn off repaint and just put it on normal and uh, draw a quick thing. Okay, and then uh, now I'll turn on repaint brush and you can see it's only painted the where I've already got paint, um, which is also very handy, especially if you're going to do shadows or something. So if I want to put that, make that look like a, a shadow of, um, you know, a darker version of that color, then it's, it's a very quick way of doing um, uh, lighting effects on characters and so forth. Uh, the other major difference with um, Toon Boom software and, and the brush tool is the, the way these vector strokes are treated. In Flash, you do have the ability to do something like this um, by turning on object drawing, but this one, it's by default. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. If I sketch, oh, I'll turn off repaint. If I sketch a line, um, and I think I've shown you about rotating the workspace. I'm just holding down Control alt to rotate that. Um, 
and then I've just pressed shift X to reset the rotation. Anyway, I've, got, I've done this sketchy drawing of a lot of strokes. And what's great about this is that every stroke is treated individually as an individual object. And I can go in, select the ones that aren't doing what I want them to do and get rid of them. Or I can move them, tweak them with the selection tool uh, just to clean, clean things up a bit. And this is great. I mean, you can still, you can do that in Flash, but it's, um, it's uh, not quite as, somehow not quite as lovely as this. Um, and by selecting things, you can do different things to them. So if I want to paint that, and this is great. I just recently finished a project, um, a freelance project, where all the eyes um, in on the characters were this kind of thing. You could only, there was the, the cornea of the eye, and the dark lines were at the top and the bottom. So what we would do is we'd draw, draw the whole outline of the eye and then just recolor the, uh, the inside strokes uh, a different color like this. So that's great. Um, that kind of gives you a lot of control. But one of the tool options, one of the um, properties of the brush tool that you can change is to auto flatten these strokes so they don't come up as individual objects, which you might want to do and that's this button here um, you just click on that and now as you as I sketch these are all automatically flattened and joined to one another so if I select one it's um, it's all one object so you can leave that on if you prefer so it's all one thing or you can keep it um, play it safe and have lots of different strokes that you can manipulate separately um, apart from that you've got shapes that you can play with there's some interesting shapes here um, stars and dots and things to mess about with. Uh, you can create your own brush presets. There are a bunch of default brushes that you can choose here, but you can add and remove various brushes and you can rename them. If I call this, uh, I'll rename this brush, for example, um, Rough Sketch. And that's the, the brush that I will use for rough sketching. So uh, the other things um, we'll cover in later tutorials, there's uh, gradient tools and um, and things like that so we'll talk about those a bit later but next up we'll just look at some of the other tools